If you've been watching our channel for any amount of time and you own a guitar, you've heard me say that humidity and temperature are important. So much so we once locked a guitar in the trunk of a car. Well now you can track these with your phone using some new devices. We're going to put them head to head in a real world test. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming an insider by following the link below. So as I said, humidity and temperature are very important if you own a guitar. It's especially important with an acoustic guitar, and even more so if it's a solid wood instrument like this Taylor GTK21E that is sitting over my shoulder. Isn't it pretty? So Taylor has been kind of on the forefront for years of trying to educate consumers about humidity and temperature. Basically, long story short, if your guitar gets too dry because of a lack of moisture or low humidity, the guitar can crack. And you really don't want that to happen in an expensive instrument. If it gets too wet or there's too much humidity, which we can deal with here in South Texas, the guitar will swell up. It will initially sound bad. You will start dealing with kind of thuddy sounds. You can have cracks that way, separation, dropped braces, all sorts of stuff. The bottom line is you want your guitar to be in the happy medium. But how do you keep track of it and how do you address it? Well, on the market for years, there have been a number of humidification devices, effectively sponges or two-way bags, things that will add or take away moisture from the instrument and the case. How you monitor that has largely been left up to hygrometers that are sitting out in your case or on your case or on the wall or in the room or some combination of in order to track what's going on around your guitar. Well, D'Addario and Taylor guitars have both come up with really fancier high-tech hygrometers that are specifically designed for your instrument. So the first one that was out was the D'Addario Humiditrack. And this is a Bluetooth equipped, uh, basically hygrometer that tracks the humidity, uh, relative humidity and temperature in your guitar case. It will also track uh, bumps, uh, things that you know could be damaging to the instrument, and it communicates with an app on your smartphone. It'll even pu send you push alerts if things are getting drastic so that you know there's a problem, your guitar humidity is dropped below a certain percentage, um, and so you need to address it. Well, Taylor's done a very similar thing, and this has been in the works for a while. Some people will know that Taylor advertised this initially years ago, but we're continuing to refine the app as well as the device. And this is a little bit different than the D'Addario because this is guitar agnostic, but this one goes to Taylor Church. And what that means is that this one can only install in a Taylor, specifically in a Taylor that has an ES equipped pickup system because it replaces the battery compartment. Both of these are battery powered. This one with like a CR2032, this one with the nine volt battery that also powers the preamp for your uh, onboard pickup system. So if you have an ES2 equipped Taylor, you can swap out your battery compartment for the Taylor Sense and get all of the benefits of having this inside your guitar. Now a clear benefit of this is that this is in your guitar. It's actually registering the relative humidity and temperature inside the instrument, and it's with the instrument if you take it out of the case. So it's going to record potential damaging bumps just like the Humiditrack will, but not just in the case, even if it's sitting on a stand. So hey, worship guitarists, if you have your guitar on a stand and you walk away from that stage and then you get an alert on your phone, Someone knocked it off the stand, and now you know, versus coming back and wondering where that new crack came from. With this one, it's very, very similar, but it is, since it's guitar agnostic, clipped inside the case, you're limited to the knowledge of what's going on while the guitar is in the case, which also has a lot of value to it. But how well do they work is my question. And this is for me as, well, as much as it is for you. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend a week with both of these devices in guitars and cases that I own, and I'm going to keep track of what's going on with the relative humidity, as well as the temperature, and even the alerts of potential bumps um, or impact events that take place with the guitars. 
And at the end of that week, we'll come back, we'll take a look at it and help you decide which one is best for you. Now, if you have a Taylor guitar, it really comes down to a question. If you don't and can't install this, then we'll see if this one lives up to the hype and is worth your dollar investment. So let's put them to the test and see how they do. All right, so we've got, I'm finally doing the install, welcome to my abode. Um, I, we've got the two things, I've got the Taylor Sense and I've got the Humidity Track. Now, I'll confess, initially what I was going to do is I was going to install the Humidity Track in a, a guitar case that I have, and then I was going to install the Taylor Sense in the only guitar that I currently have that Taylor has Taylor's ES system in it, which is a GS Mini. And then I realized that's not gonna be a great idea because I can't put the Humidity Track clipped in the GS Mini case, and ideally, I want these in the same guitar. So what we have instead is a new Taylor guitar. Um, and we're going to install it in here. And if this guitar survives, which I anticipate it will, I don't plan to put it through too rigor of, rigorous of a test, we'll probably put this on sale with the Taylor since installed. So if after watching this video, you want to own a Taylor and you want to have Taylor since, uh, we basically the installation is done free for you. So here's what we've got. We've got a Taylor 214 uh, CE Deluxe in Sunburst. Isn't that pretty? And, you know, this is my dining room table. And for many of us, these have become our desks during the pandemic. Um, they have become all sorts of stuff. You know, they've become uh, string change stations. And if you're not using yours for a string change station, are you even living? So here's what I do when I'm changing strings and I don't have a big platform. Lay out a towel, use some decorative pillows, give them some use, and, uh, and then I put the guitar down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, Taylor Sense in here. And to do this, we're going to first loosen the strings. And uh, this isn't a very involved process. The only reason I am loosening the strings is we have to remove the the battery pack on the on the bottom, and uh, to really get access and, and pull a cable out long enough to plug it in, we just have to loosen a clip. So to do that, I'm gonna take my watch off, and I'm just gonna loosen these strings real quick. Not take them off all the way, just loosen them with my handy dandy Daddario Pro string winder and cutter, which I have like 15 of. By the way, if you're ever loosening strings and you have an under saddle pickup, so something that's a piezo pickup but not like the Taylor ES2, proceed with caution. If you take all the strings off at the same time and you loosen all of that tension and then you put them back on, you can end up with string to string balance issues um, where some strings are louder than other strings. And that's because there's now an even pressure, downward pressure on the saddle. So see if that's big enough to get my big, chunky, big boned wrist in. So I'm reaching in the guitar and there is, there are little clips that are stuck to the side of the guitar that just hold the battery cable in place. So it's not basically moving around and I'm reaching in and I'm unfolding one of them, these little clips, I'm not disconnecting it. I'm not taking it off. I'm just unfolding. It's very pliable metal. Okay. There's one big thick cable. And now you can hear it. It's free. Okay. So now I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is the part we need to take out. This is both uh, the end pin jack and the battery compartment. So first we're taking out the battery. It takes a nine volt. And by the way, some of you might have noticed if you own a Taylor that you go buy a nine volt put in there and it's tight, that's because there's no industry standard for battery sizes. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, so there are two Phillips head screws here in the bottom, and I've got this precision, precision screwdriver that I'm using, and I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do it this way. And uh, that one's going to be a little too small, so let me go get another bit, uh, screwdriver a bit. Okay, I've got a chunkier little screwdriver with a bit here. It's a PH1 Phillips head. And uh, again, what we're doing is we're just taking out these screws. Gotta love ratcheting screwdrivers. And 
And I'll show you why you want to loosen the screws. And then later I'll show you the installation process for the humidity track. And uh, then you can vote which one you think is easier. Now, if you don't have a Taylor guitar, I can tell you humidity tracks is definitely easier because if you don't have a Taylor guitar, you can't do this, which is why the Taylor Sense is made for Taylor guitars. I know. If you guys vote, I'll just rip out an ES2 from a Taylor guitar and install it into a Martin, and then we'll get crazy Frankenstein stuff. Sacrilege, everyone says. Okay, so this is why I loosened that cable. So you can see there's this cable right here. It's attached to this little clip Molex connector. And I can pull it out far enough to easily disconnect it by pushing down on the clip and pulling out the cable. So this is the one that came in the guitar. It's a battery box. It's an input jack. And it's a little circuit board. Taylor's been using that design for, well, geez, I guess 20 years now in various uh, intervals. And then here's the Taylor Sense. So you get the box, an important thing. Only hold your Taylor Sense battery box by the plastic body. Avoid touching the circuit board. Uh, you don't want electrostatic damaging it before installation. Ensure all the Taylor Sense sensors are working properly. Do this in certain 9-volt battery in the Taylor Sense battery, bo battery box while looking at the bottom of the circuit board to see if you see a red light blinking. And then there's, there's instructions online. Or you can watch this video. Okay, so I'm going to get charged up with static electricity to really check the durability of this thing. Just kidding. Here's our new battery box. I'm going to take the battery out of the old battery box. I'm going to put in the new battery box. And uh, we're going to take very good care of the circuit board, just like Linus on Linus Tech Tips does. If anyone's ever watched him, he, uh, he doesn't take close any careful care or static when it comes to computer components. Anyways. Okay, look, I'm only touching the plastic. So what we're going to do is let's test it first, like the instructions say, because I'm a rule follower. Okay, seriously, this is the battery box that came with it. What am I doing wrong here? There we go. And there's a light. All right, now take the battery out before you proceed further. Okay, move the old one. Take the new one, and we're just gonna plug it in. Give a very, very gentle tug just to make sure that it's seated well, and that's it. Now, when you're reinstalling it, because I've seen someone do this wrong on, on YouTube and then fix it, the end pin should be in the middle of the bottom bout of the guitar. So basically, the battery goes toward the back of the guitar, and then you just slide it back in. You take the batteries that you removed previously from the other battery box, and you change the direction of your little chubby screwdriver. And we reinstall it. Doesn't require a lot of pressure, it's just holding a battery box in. No need to go jiffy lube on it. Anyone who's ever had their oil change to a Jiffy Lube and then tried to change it yourself later knows exactly what I'm talking about. And all the rest of you, you're too young. You should go learn how to change your oil right now. Learn how to change the tire, too. It's an important life skill. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to put the battery back in. Hear the click. It is effectively installed. All I got to do is tighten up the strings, and it's good to go. I'm not going to make you watch that part because I have to tune it. Now, let me show you how to install the, the Dario Humiditrack in the, uh, in the guitar. So now we have our guitar in its case, and this is the guitar we just installed the Taylor on, but now we're gonna install the Humiditrack on it. We're doing it in the same guitar so that we can monitor if they're giving us the same readings as my external hygrometer is going to be reading as well. Oh, I opened the wrong end. Don't you hate that? Okay, so this will, of course, work with any guitar and case, but really I think it's ideal for a hard shell case, and I'll show you why. Here's how you install it. 
there's a little thing that says pool. Pool. Then there's a little clip. It's Velcro. So, ah, came off. We want to peel these stickers. I'm going to connect these, put these on the back of this. And there's two of these, and I'm going to put the seam right where the battery compartment disconnects. So those two pieces of Velcro will actually separate. You can still change the battery without taking the Velcro off. See? But otherwise, it's like one solid piece. Gives better mounting surface for the second part. I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to peel that off. Man, the guy who invented Velcro, how much do you think he made? I don't think he made anything because I think he was working for DuPont at the time. Okay. All right, now you could mount this a number of ways, but I think this is kind of the ideal way. We're going to stick the Velcro sticky pads onto this metal clip. And then ready? Here goes the installation process. The metal clip clips onto an area of your case near the neck where it's not making contact with the guitar. Installation done. So you comment, you tell me which installation you think was easier. Um, and I agree. So now all there is to do is to connect these to my smart device and start monitoring temperature, humidity, and impacts on this guitar. And we're going to see what the humidic track picks up, what the Taylor Sense picks up, and how similar they are. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so done some testing. Here's some interesting things between these two uh, different sensors. I have a room hygrometer, you can see there, it's currently measuring at 52% uh, humidity in my room, my little office here, that I share with my wife. And uh, that's, that's about right, because I've got air conditioning running, there's a vent right up there, uh, and, and it's 71, 71 degrees. Okay, so here's what I have found. The two sensors are pretty close to one another, as far as what they're picking up with temperature and humidity. They're one degree off from one another. The Taylor Sense matches the temperature of the room according to that sensor, which is 71, whereas the Humiditrex says it's 70. It's colder, which is weird. Um, so maybe the internal of the guitar is one degree warmer, I suppose. Um, they're off by a fraction of a percentage when it comes to humidity. Um, the humidity in the guitar seems to be... Uh, slightly lower than the humidity in the case, uh, which I guess, again, that could potentially make sense. Um, and it's very different from the humidity in the room. So it's, it's actually higher in the guitar. And so what that would say is that the cold air drying out uh, my, the air in my room to the point that I want it to um, is not as affected in the case, which is kind of expected because the case has its own humidity and it's a sealed uh, environment, and so it's not affected. One of the biggest things, though, that's different is I've been testing slightly the uh, the impact, and I'm, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Uh, I've been testing the impact drop test of the uh, of the case or the impact registration of the two uh, sensors. The I did three little drops of the case, nothing that would cause damage to the guitar or the case, just a few inches off the ground two vertically on the side of the case, and then I flipped the case over. And that's something that all of us guitar players deal with, right, where the case just kind of flops. It, the Taylor Sense picked up all three impact events, and it even registered the amount of force in Gs, 18, 18, and 20. The Humiditrack didn't pick up anything, which is against my prior hypothesis. I thought because it was mounted on a clip in the case, it might have more inertia, and so it might pick it up. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So instead, what's happening is that the... Uh, it's set. To, I actually checked the settings to make sure that it was showing uh, that it was still turned on to register impact events. It was, and uh, it was showing that it had a threshold of nine Gs. So if the Taylor Sense sensor is correct and it's picking it up at 
18 G's, 18 G's, and 20 G's, then the Humidatrack should have picked it up if it is it, you know, calibrated correctly, which tells me something's amiss there. So temperature humidity settings, pretty close, nothing that would be cause of concern. If you're buying one of these for impact awareness, yeah, at this point I might say that the Taylor Sense is, is more accurate. So, All right, so you've seen the video diary. It's been basically a few weeks since we started this little test between the D'Addario Humidatrack and Taylor's Sense uh, humidification tracking system, I guess you'd call it. Um, and here are my impressions after testing both of these. If you own a Taylor that has an ES2 pickup system, you're concerned about humidity, which everybody who owns a solid wood instrument, whether it's a violin, cello, or guitar, should be concerned about, um, then you should get the Taylor Sense. I found the app to work great. Uh, it measured humidity very well. It was pretty much within range of my in-home digital hygrometer that I use and trust uh, that matches another digital hygrometer that I have in cases. It, it worked as advertised and it also picked up uh, bump incidences. Now, granted, all I did, which you can see in the video, was you know knock a case down just a little bit, but granted, I didn't really want to drop a case down a flight of stairs. And even that small little bit of impact, it picked up. And so I think that could be invaluable whether you're traveling with your guitar or since it's in the guitar itself, even if it's, say, on a stand and you walk away and you, you come back and you have, uh, you know, it's still on the stand, but you have record of an incident, that means someone knocked it off, put it back on, and now you know. And hopefully the guitar is fine, but if it's not, now you don't have to guess as to why. So I think there's a lot of benefit to the system. Um, I'm going to put it in my GS Mini, which is the only guitar I currently have from Taylor that has an ES2 pickup system in it. Otherwise, I'd add it to my other guitars as well because I, I do like the system. Now, that being said, the D'Addario Humidatrack also performed pretty well. Um, for most of the time that I had uh, both of them in the same case, so to speak, the guitar and the case um, respectively, they were measuring pretty much within the same parameters of one another. The struggle that I had with the Humidatrack is the, the accident sensor, I could not get to work. I went through the app several times, I made sure it turned on. It says, <clears throat> it looked like at first there was a way of adjusting it, but actually it seemed pretty static uh, of the kind of the, uh, the parameters for when it would go off and tell you that it's had an accident. And, you know, as you could see, I could not get it to replicate whether it was in the guitar case or even out of the guitar case, and I was just dropping the module from various heights. Drop test uh, outside the case. Let's see how it does. Surely that won't break it. Okay, drop test from a height of above four feet has resulted in the case popping open slightly. Uh, it's still reading. I don't think it's broken. Just case just popped open, but uh, still no impact events. So, yeah, I'm going to rate this one as not very effective for impact. What I managed to do was to cause it to pop open, which is not a big deal. It's designed to have the battery replaced and stuff. Um, so there's no damage done to the sensor inside that I could tell, but it didn't register it falling from a height of about six feet. Um, so if you're purchasing it for that functionality, I think it still needs some work, at least in the experience that I had with it. But if you're purchasing it to track temperature humidity, which I think is its primary function in both of these cases, uh, then it did that very, very well. There was one outlier uh, that I will talk about, and that was where I got an alert. Now, that's one of the benefits of this system, is you not having to kind of babysit it. It, you know, it, it's its own nanny for your instruments, and it will tell you via an alert on your smartphone if there is something that is out of parameter. So if your guitar humidity is dropping or raising too low or the temperatures are getting outside of these parameters, it will alert you. And that's really the benefit of this so that you know before you actually have an issue. And in this particular case, the odd thing was that I got an alert from the D'Addario Humidatrack, I didn't get an alert from the Taylor Sense, and the alert was for uh, humidity and temperature being way out of parameter, but when I compared it to the Taylor Sense and I compared it to my uh, digital hygrometer, it didn't match. 
so it was this weird kind of alert outlier that didn't match up with uh, the other stuff, which means it was inaccurate. I don't know what caused it, and I could never get it to replicate or do that again during the period of time that I was testing it. So it may just be an outlier. It may have just been a glitch, uh, something that it picked up on. But that being said, here's how I would approach both of these instruments or both of these units. If you don't have a tailor and you want to monitor your humidity in your case, and particularly with multiple instruments, I think this is a very valuable tool. Purchase the Humiditrack, put it in your case, but also still continue to use a digital hygrometer on the wall or on the case in whatever room or place that you keep your guitars, because that will be kind of an additional fail-safe. There's a truth when it comes to this stuff that, you know, uh, one could be wrong but two usually aren't. And so if you have that as backup, you know the general atmosphere is okay. If you take a guitar out of that atmosphere, you've got you know, the, uh, the backup that's gonna tell you on your phone what's going on with the instrument. Um, and if you have multiple instruments, you can check them all you know, kind of at a glance and get alerted if there's an issue with any of them. So I do think they're very valuable. They work both pretty well. The Taylor in this particular example outperformed the Humiditrack, but it is a proprietary system that you have to have a Taylor guitar for. I don't know if this would happen in every case. This isn't like a broad, uh, you know, scientific method where I have a control group and whatnot. I used, you know, one example of each. So it could be that the gyroscope sensor that's in the Humiditrack for this particular unit just has a problem and your, your mileage may vary, which basically means that this was all pointless. This just really didn't tell us a lot. No, uh, this is not Top Gear or Grand Tour. Actually, we did learn some things. We learned that they're valuable tools, they're pretty accurate, and, uh, and in my testing, I think they offer a lot of valuable information. So if you have a high-end guitar that's all solid wood or even has a solid wood top, something that you care about. These are both cheap insurance, but I would not rely on them by themselves. I would go ahead and get a uh, digital hygrometer. And I'll show you again, the proprietariness of this. So this was the, uh, the Humiditrack that I installed on the video. This was definitely the easier installation. This was the slightly more complicated installation, but it's not that hard. And if you can follow instructions, you can do it. And this is the Taylor one. If you don't have this kind of battery pack for your Taylor guitar, um, you can't use it, and this becomes your only option. And it's still a pretty good option in a, outside of just a digital hygrometer. So I'm a fan of both, um, and there you have it. Hopefully that information was helpful to you. We stock both of these, so if you're interested in either one, make sure that you visit our website, alamomusic.com. You can check out these and all of our humidification tools. If you're in a dry environment, if you're in a wet environment, we have things to help you maintain the t uh, relative humidity of your guitar or other instrument. It's very important. I cannot emphasize that enough. The last thing that you want to do is buy a guitar that's several thousands of dollars, skimp on a inexpensive product, and deal with a crack in the wood because of it. Don't do that. That's, that's not something that's a very painful lesson to learn. So cheap insurance is available. And if you are aware of anything else out on the market, uh, maybe it's currently in development or maybe it's something that's been under the radar that does what these do, drop us a note in the comments because I'd love to test it in comparison to these and do a follow-up and see how they go. As for me, I'm going to continue to use both of these and maybe come back with a long-term follow-up and see if I'm able to get the, the uh, impact sensor working on the Humiditrack and if I have any more uh, outlying incidents. So anyways, let us know your thoughts about these, how you like this test. If you'd like us to do more real world stuff like this, we'll test it for you so you don't have to test it yourself before purchase. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to get more involved with the channel, visit the link in our description and learn about becoming an Alamo Music Insider on Patreon, where we're doing a lot more behind the scenes stuff. Lots of cool fun going on over there in addition to lessons and whatnot. Um, as always, I like to remind you that the very best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing, not the one that stays in its case and gets babied with humidity. So make sure you are taking those things out, playing them, having fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.